dear students today we will learn about the topic decoding the codons the objective of today's lecture are to know about the decoding of the genetic information to know about the codons to study various features of the genetic code and finally to learn about the steps in assessing the genetic information dear students let's begin with the introduction take a moment to look at our hands the bone skin and muscle you see are made up of cells and each of those cells contains many millions of proteins as a matter of fact proteins are key molecular or building blocks for every organism on the earth how are these proteins made in a cell for starters the instructions for making proteins are written in a cell's dna in the form of genes all cells control when and how much each one of its genes are expressed first thing we need to understand what it means when we say that a gene is expressed if the gene encodes a protein one might reasonably propose that expression of a gene means how much functional protein is made gene encode proteins and proteins dictate cell function therefore thousands of genes expressed in a particular cell determine what that cell can do hence we can define that gene expression is the process by which information from a gene is used in the synthesis of a functional gene product that enables it to produce end products protein or non coding rna and ultimately affect a phenotype as the final effect precisely gene expression is the process of transcription of a gene into mrna the processing of that mrna and its translation into a protein for protein encoding genes gene expression is summarized in the central dogma of molecular biology first formulated by francis crick in 1958 further developed in his 1970s article and expanded by the subsequent discoveries of reverse transcription and rna replication the central dogma of biology is that dna is used as a template to transcribe rna and that rna is used to synthesize proteins on the ribosomes and those proteins give you your unique phenotype or physical characteristics or appearance basically a gene is used to build a protein in a two step process step 1 is transcription that is here the dna sequence of a gene is written in the form of rna or precisely mrna in eukaryotes like you and me the rna is processed and often has a few bits snipped out of it to make the final product called a messenger rna or mrna step 2 is translation or protein synthesis in this stage the mrna is decoded to build a protein or a chunk subunit of a protein that contains a specific series of amino acids dear students let's now discuss the genetic code during translation a cell reads the information in a messenger rna or mrna and uses it to build a protein actually to be a little more technical an mrna doesn't always encode or provide instructions for a whole protein instead what we can confidently say is that it always encodes a polypeptide or a chain of amino acids in an mrna the instructions for building a polypeptide are rna nucleotides read in groups of 3 these groups of 3 are called codons there are 61 codons for amino acids and each of them is read to specify a certain amino acid out of the 20 commonly found in proteins once codon aug specifies the amino acid methionine and also acts as a start codon to signal the start of protein construction or synthesis there are three more codons that do not specify amino acids these top codons u aa uag and uga tell the cell when a polypeptide is complete and the protein synthesis has to be terminated 
altogether this collection of codon amino acid relationship is called the genetic code because it lets cells decode an mRNA into a chain of amino acids. So this brings us to the question, what are codons? So cells decode mRNA by reading their nucleotide in groups of three called codons. A codon is a sequence of three nucleotides which together form a unit of genetic code in a DNA or RNA molecule. The concept of codons was first described by Francis Crib and his colleagues in 1961. During the same year, Marshall Nirenberg and Heinrich Mathy performed experiments that began deciphering the genetic code. They showed that the RNA sequence UUU specifically coded for amino acid phenyl allylene. Following this discovery, Nirenberg, Philip Leder, and Hargobin Kharana identified the rest of the genetic code and fully described each three letter codon and its corresponding amino acid. So codons are the units of information in the mRNA and are made up of three consecutive nucleotides, each of which can be one of the four bases like uracil, cytosine, guanine, or adenine. So 64 different codons result from all the combinations of these bases. Genetic code actually allows DNA and RNA sequences to be decoded into the amino acids of the protein. The genetic code is the set of rules used by living cells to translate information encoded within genetic material, DNA or RNA sequences of nucleotide triplets or codons into proteins. Here are some features of codons. Most codons specify an amino acid. Three stop codons mark the end of a protein. One start codon AUG marks the beginning of a protein and also encodes the amino acid methionine. Codons in an mRNA are read during translation, beginning with a start codon and continuing until a stop codon is reached. mRNA codons are read from 5 dash to 3 dash direction and thus specify the order of amino acids in a protein from N terminus, that is methionine, to C terminus. The full set of relationships between codons and amino acids or stop signals is called the genetic code. An important point about the genetic code is that it's universal, meaning that the set of correspondences between the codons and the amino acids is highly conserved in all organisms from bacteria to humans. That's with minor exceptions, virtually all species from bacteria to humans use the genetic code shown in the figure for protein synthesis. The information transferred or passed from the parent generation to the offspring is called genetic code. The process begins at the cellular level when the genes get split into the parental reproductive cells, that is gametes, and then get united to form a hybrid set of genes during fertilization. The complete set of relationship among amino acids and codons is said to be genetic code, which is often summarized in a table. Dear students, let's now discuss the overview of translation. How is an mRNA read to make a polypeptide or a protein? Two types of molecules with key roles in translation are tRNA, that is transfer RNA, and the ribosomes. First, let's discuss the tRNA or the transfer RNA. tRNAs are molecular bridges that connect mRNA codons to the amino acids they encode. One end of each tRNA has a sequence of three nucleotides which can bind to specific mRNA codons. The other end of the tRNA carries the amino acids specified by the codons. There are many different types of tRNAs. Each type reads one or a few codons and brings the right amino acids matching those codons. Dear students, now the ribosomes. Ribosomes are the structures where polypeptides or proteins are built. They are also called as protein synthesizing factories. They are made up of proteins and RNA. Each ribosome has two subunits, a larger one and a small one, which comes together around an mRNA kind of like the two halves of a hamburger bun becoming together around the patty. 
the ribosome provides a set of handy slots where tRNA can find their matching codons on the mRNA template and deliver their amino acids. These slots are called the A site, that is acceptor site, another is the P site, peptidyl site, and E, that is the exit site. Not only that, but the ribosomes also act as an enzyme catalyzing the chemical reaction that links amino acids together to make a chain. Want to learn more about the structure and functions of tRNA and ribosomes? Now, let's discuss the steps of translation for that. Your cells are making new proteins every second of the day. And each of those proteins must contain the right set of amino acids linked together in just the right order. That may sound like a challenging task, but luckily your cells, along with those of other animals, plants and bacteria, are up to the job that too perfectly. To see how cells make proteins, let's divide translation into three stages. First, the initiation, that is the starting of the protein synthesis, elongation of the polypeptide chain, that is adding on to the protein chain, and the termination, that is finishing of the protein synthesis process. So, getting started with, first with the initiation. In the ribosome assemblies, around the mRNA to be read, and the first tRNA carrying the amino acid methionine, which matches the start codon AUG. This setup called the initiation complex is needed in order for translation to get started. Extending the chain, that is the elongation, is the stage where the amino acid chain gets elongated. In elongation, the mRNA is read one codon at a time and the amino acid matching each codon is added to a growing polypeptide chain or a protein chain. Each time a new codon is exposed, a matching tRNA binds to the codon, the existing amino acid chain, that is a polypeptide, is linked onto the amino acid of the tRNA via a chemical reaction. The mRNA is shifted one codon over the ribosome, exposing a new codon for reading. During elongation, tRNA moves through the A, P, and E sites of the ribosome as shown in the figure. This process repeats many times as new codons are read and new amino acids are added to the growing polypeptide chain. Now let us discuss the last step that is the finishing or termination of the protein synthesis. Termination is the stage in which the finished polypeptide growing chain is released from the ribosomes. It begins when a stop codon that is UAG, UAA or UGA enters the ribosome triggering a series of events that separate the chain from its tRNA and allows it to drift out of the ribosome. After termination, the polypeptide may still need to fold into the right 3D shape, undergoing processing such as the removal of amino acids, get shipped to the right place in the cell or combine with other polypeptides before it can do its job as a functional protein. Dear students, ever wonder how antibiotics kill bacteria, for instance? When you have a sinus infection, different antibiotics work in different ways, but some attack a very basic process in bacterial cells that knock out the ability to make new proteins. So to use a little molecular biology vocab, these antibiotics block translation. In the process of translation, a cell reads information from a molecule called a messenger RNA or mRNA and uses this information to build a protein. So translation is happening constantly in a normal bacterial cell, just like it is in most of the cells of your body, and it's key to keeping you and your bacterial visitors alive. When you take certain antibiotics like erythromycin, the antibiotic molecule will latch onto key translation molecule inside the bacterial cells and basically stall them. With no way to make proteins, the bacterium will stop functioning and eventually die. That's why infections clear up when they are treated with the antibiotics. Cells need translation to stay alive and understanding how it works so we can shut it down with antibiotics can save us from bacterial 
infections. Let's take a closer look at how translation happens from the first step to the final product. So translation, the big picture involves decoding a messenger RNA and using its information to build a chain of amino acids. For most purposes, a polypeptide is basically just a protein with the technical difference being that some large proteins are made up of several polypeptide chains and giving rise to tertiary and quaternary structures. Dear students, let's now discuss the genetic code in detail. In an mRNA, the instructions for building a polypeptide come in groups of three nucleotides called codons. Here are some key features of codons to keep in mind as we move forward. There are 61 different codons for amino acids. Three stop codons mark the polypeptide as finished one. Codon AUG is the start signal to kick off translation. It also specifies the amino acid methionine. These relationships between mRNA codons and amino acids are known as the genetic code. Dear students, let's now discuss the basic concept from codons to amino acids, that is, decoding the codons. In translation, the codons of an mRNA are read in order from the 5 dash end to the 3 dash end by molecules called as tRNAs. Each tRNA has a set of three nucleotides that binds to a matching mRNA codon through base pairing. The other end of the tRNA carries the amino acids that specified by the particular codon. So tRNA binds to an mRNA inside a protein and RNA structure called the ribosome. As tRNA enters slots in the ribosome and binds to the codons, their amino acids are linked to the growing polypeptide chain in a chemical reaction. The end result is a polypeptide whose amino acid sequence mirrors the sequence of codon in the mRNA. The translation beginning, middle and end. A book or movie has three basic parts, a beginning, middle and end. So translation has pretty much the same three parts but they have fancier names that is initiation elongation and termination. So let's first begin with the initiation. In this stage, the ribosome gets together with the mRNA and the first tRNA so translation can begin. Then the elongation that is the middle, in this stage, amino acids are brought to the ribosomes by tRNA and linked together to form a chain. Then the third is the termination or end. In the last stage, the finished polypeptide is released to go and do its job in the cell. Let's take a closer look at how each stage works. First, the initiation. In order for translation to start, we need a few key ingredients. These include a ribosome, which comes into pieces, large and small subunits. An mRNA with instructions for the protein, we build an initiator, tRNA, carrying the first amino acid in the protein, which is almost always methionine, uh, that is AUG. During initiation, the pieces must come together in just the right way. Together, they form the initiation complex, the molecular setup needed to start making a new protein. Inside our cells and the cells of other eukaryotes, translation initiation goes like this. First, the tRNA carrying the methionine attached to the small ribosomal subunit. So together, they bind to the 5 dash end of the mRNA by recognizing the 5 dash GTP cap that is added during the processing in the nucleus. Then they walk along the mRNA in the 3 dash direction, stopping when they reach the start codon, often but not always the first, that is the AUG, which codes for methionine. In bacteria, the situation is a little different. Here, the small ribosomal subunit does not start at the 5 dash end of the mRNA and travel towards the 3 dash end. Instead, it attaches directly to certain sequences in the mRNA. These sequences come just before start codon and point them out to the ribosomes. Why use shine Delgarno sequences? So, bacterial genes are often transcribed in groups called operons. So one bacterial mRNA can contain the 
coding sequence for several genes. A shine delgarno sequence marks the start of each coding sequence, letting the ribosome find the right codon for each gene. Dear students, let us discuss the second step that is the elongation. I like to remember what happens in this middle stage of the translation by its handy name. Elongation is when the polypeptide chain gets longer, but how does the chain actually grow? To find out, let us take a look at the first round of elongation. After the initiation complex has formed, but before any amino acids have been linked to make a chain, our first methionine carrying tRNA starts out in the middle slot of the ribosome called the P site or peptidyl site. Next to it, a fresh codon is exposed in another slot called the A site or acceptor site. The A site will be the lending site for the next tRNA, one whose anticodon is a perfect complementary match for the exposed codon. So how is the right tRNA chosen? Once the matching tRNA has landed in the A site, that is acceptor site, it is time for the action that is the formation of the peptide bond or peptide bond that connects one amino acid to another. This step transfers the methionine from the first tRNA onto the amino acid of the second tRNA in the acceptor site of the ribosome. Not bad, we now have two amino acids a very tiny polypeptide chain, the methionine forms the N terminus of the polypeptide and the other amino acid is the C terminus. Dear students, but the question is how does the chain continue to grow? Once the peptide bond is formed, the mRNA is pulled onward through the ribosome by exactly one codon at one time. This shift allows the first empty tRNA to drift out via the E site or the exit site of the ribosome. It also exposes a new codon in the A site so the whole cycle can repeat again and again. Dear students, let us now discuss the last step of the translation or protein synthesis that is the termination. Polypeptides like all good things must eventually come to an end. So translation ends in a process called a termination. So termination happens when a stop codon in the mRNA that is UAA, UAG or UGA enters the A site that is the acceptor site of the ribosome. Stop codons are recognized by proteins called release factors which fit neatly into the P site of the ribosome though they are not tRNAs. So release factors mess with the enzyme that normally forms peptide bonds that make it add a water molecule to the last amino acid of the chain. This reaction separates the protein or the polypeptide growing chain from the tRNA and the newly made protein is released. What next? Luckily, translation equipment is very reusable. After the small and large ribosomal subunits separate from the mRNA and from each other, each element can and usually quickly does take part in another round of the translation. So dear students, this was all about today's lecture of decoding the codons. Hope you have understood it well. Take care. Goodbye.